Hello, uh, welcome to the second video I'm making about a JRPG that I absolutely loved growing up. Um, just similar to my Lagaya 2 video that I made a while back. I'm going to be looking off camera here in Grandia 2 for the PlayStation 4. Just trying to see what I can find. Um, there's not a whole lot uh, compared to what I was able to find out about Lagaya 2 off camera, but there's still a few oddities here and there and some funny things that I'll show and share and discuss. So I will give my commentary on the clips that I have here and on some of the things I found outside of the boundaries of Grandia 2. Now the uh, in-game debug menu, you basically just use it by pressing different button combinations on your controller. And it does a few other things besides just the free cam. For example, it can make the player character run faster than normal. And that's good for getting past barriers or going through doors you're not supposed to go through and that sort of thing. But unfortunately the game does have a lot of checks and balances in place it seems where you can't really sequence break much so you can't really go places you're not supposed to go just yet. Um, even though you can bypass barriers the game is pretty foolproof there to prevent you from going to parts of the game you're not supposed to go to yet. So I have rambled enough and with that I will go on ahead to the first clip I have for you guys. I hope you enjoy. First off here, I'm not honestly sure what I pressed to make these little red cubes appear everywhere. I tried very hard to replicate it and just couldn't, so I'm not even really sure what the purpose of that would be. Um, but this discovery here is close to the beginning of the game, where uh, next to the guy you can talk to to uh, give you battle tips and tutorials and stuff was this monster just chilling out in the void. Um, it was weird to see. Um, I find out what its purpose is here, and apparently the whole game works similarly, and you'll see in some other clips later on, but um, whenever you have like a scripted battle like a boss, or in this case if you talk to this uh, tutorial dude, um, the only way for battle to trigger is to apparently have like an actual monster on the screen somewhere that you could touch and encounter like a normal enemy. I don't know why the scripting has to work that way, but you can see here that I left the boundaries and just talked or uh, touched the enemy through normal means. And it still went to a battle, um, but as you can tell, the background is nice and glitched up. <laughs> um, so, this was the first thing that I discovered that I had to share with everybody. And since it wasn't initiated properly, I couldn't really win the battle because there was no uh, tutorial guidance that I could really do because I initiated it the wrong way. Thankfully, another uh, nifty feature with the debug is pressing buttons just to instantly win battles. Like I did here, but after the battle I just fall to my doom. And here, um, you'll see the party getting onto this... I don't even... I fucking remember the name of this, uh, but whatever this little thing is that they used across the uh, granite cliffs. Um, but you see the most of the party members disappear there, but Ryudo just kind of chills. And after this moves, you'll see that Ryudo is left behind as well. He's not actually inside of it. He's just uh, unfortunately left behind. I guess he doesn't get to go with everyone on their grand journey. Or should I say, Grandia journey. <laughs> This part here is pretty funny, as you can see the clouds there, and then move the camera away a little bit, you can see the trickery they used, <laughs> which is pretty effective, honestly, when you just watch the scene normally. It looks pretty good. You uh, move the camera and just realize it was just a little 2D layer of clouds right there to make it look like it had more depth or was floating amongst the sky. And this part here is interesting when they're inside um, chatting. I moved the camera back a bit and just got to see more of the interior than you normally get to see. 
looks like there's like uh, some stairs over there um barrels and crates and stuff so nothing too exciting but it's still neat to see something you know i had never seen in a game i've played countless times you know since the year 2001 up to now um so it's amazing to see stuff like this and a game i love um just that i would never get to see just to know there was a little bit more to this area than you normally would get to see um playing the game normally all right, and this here is right after they crash. You can see the gang over there uh, chilling, and Elena over there just standing around, even though they're supposed to you know, be far apart and separated after the crash, not knowing where she is, but she's just like literally right over there, and they could probably see her from all those down trees. So illusion kind of broken there, but, you know, it's what it is. You're not supposed to see this anyway. And this is uh, still around the same part of the game. I just moved the camera a little bit more. Now Lena's laying down, ready for her scene to start. And you can see Millennia <laughs> stored away in the uh, reflective part of the debris from the crash over there that Elena's about to look into and speak to Millennia. So I hate to uh, break it to you, but it was never really a mirror at all. The game's been tricking you. Millennia was literally standing there. I guess they were separated before it happens later on in the game. Spoiler alert, I guess, but this whole video is going to be spoilers, so, you know. <laughs> Here's just a kind of better look at Millennia in there. The camera is a bit finically, finically, you can tell I'm a seasoned YouTuber here. Um, finicky, rather. Um, so it's hard to get it exactly positioned as you want it. Um, but that's about the best I could do, just to get a better look in there at old Millennia. And moving on, um, here when I moved the camera a bit to uh, look at this person asleep in the bed, I realized they are missing most of their body. Um, so, I mean, I guess there was no reason to uh, animate the whole dude's body. But as you can see, it's just basically the arms and the torso, and then, of course, the head part you can already see normally. All right, and on this part, I use the other um, debug button combination to make Ryuta move faster to get through doors that you normally can't get in at this point in the game uh, because it's under attack by the eyeballs and whatnot. And I talk to the NPCs, and this is what they say, all of them. Um, all the buildings in this village, when I go through the doors, that's what they say. And again, that would be something you would normally not get to do in the game, so I'm not quite sure um, why it's just gibberish. Um, but also, as you can see now that I'm in a different part of the game, there is the soldier down there um, stored for later on in the game when it's um, time to fight them and the city's under attack. Um, again, just another example of how the game stores scripted battles um, under the map like that. And I'm not going to show it here, but I also went into the map and touched that one and it initiated a battle. And as you can see, there's these two random NPCs way off in the distance for some reason. I don't know why they're there, of course. Um, don't know if it was just an accident by the developers or if they had some other points, but I'll go talk to them here in a moment. All right, it's been a moment. I'm up here talking, to, attempting to talk to them. They have nothing to say. I press X at them and they just kind of look at me briefly and that's it. So, yeah, don't know why they're up there. All right. And here I use the um, fast motion option again to go behind the counter here at the bakery to talk to the NPC. It's a little finicky to do. I have to try a lot, and a lot of times I just clip through the graphics and end up in the void. But the uh, person back here, oddly enough, has dialogue. It may be dialogue, though, that was connected to another NPC, so I'm not 100% sure if it was unique to this character or not. But even if it is another NPC's dialogue, it's so interesting that this character had any, uh, especially considering those two people that were out of bounds uh, that I tried to talk to earlier. They had no dialogue, so don't uh, really have an explanation for this one. All right, here we are at Grandis Cathedral. Um, it's the first arrival there, and here's the grand reveal of it. And of course, I had to get me a good look at this just to see what was going on here and. It's 
looks like this. <laughs> um, I guess not too horribly bad. Um, but smaller scale and yeah, that's that's what it looks like on this scene. Don't got much to say. And there was old Ryudo just chilling there too for some reason. If you saw him, again the camera is a bit finicky so it's hard to zoom in exactly where I want it to go but I'm sure you'll see the old fella here in a moment. I guess it's all the failures, actually. This is the, during the cut scene with uh, the king talking to Melfis, or the sorry, the shadowy figure. Um, but I just wanted to show another example of how the boss um, trigger NPC. I don't really know how to refer to them, but that it's under the ground even in this cut scene. And you may see something to the left that I'm going to show off better later on. It's kind of just a crudely drawn and presented backdrop with clouds in a sky. I mean, it doesn't look the best. At first, I honestly thought it was just something left over by the developers. Um, but later on, um, Melfis crashes through the window. Like, it's such a brief scene, but you do briefly see the sky whenever he does that. Um, but it looks not that good when you take a closer look at it, which I'll do later on. But there's Melfis stored under uh, the building for his boss battle later on here. Just as a quick aside, I um, don't think I recorded this, um, but during this battle with Melfis here, it's scripted to lose. But I pressed the buttons uh, to automatically win, and nothing happened. The game just still proceeded as normal. It didn't give any experience or anything. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know what happens if you quote-unquote beat Melfis when you're not supposed to. All right, this one is going to require a bit of explanation. Uh, this is when you sneak into the castle, um, and you're not supposed to be able to go through the doors I just did. Um, I went through the doors using that fast motion option just to kind of see what would happen. Um, because normally you can't do this. You have to go through the sewers and everything to sneak in. Um, but I got inside. There wasn't too much of note in the castle. Um, but... Here in a moment, I do find something a bit interesting, and I'll just fast forward to that because it's not anything exciting you'll see here otherwise. Told you we'd get back to it. Um, this was the better angle I could get of the kind of crummy looking sky backdrop at the window. Um, once more, I unfortunately can't move the camera perfect for everything I want to look at better. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty basic. I mean, it, it, it serves its purpose because you don't even really get a good look at it. It's just there for when the window breaks later on, so there'd be something out there um, besides the void, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that was what that looks like. Now here, in my opinion, is where this actually gets interesting. Um, it's nothing too huge, but it could be just another failsafe they put in in case somehow this happened or it could be potentially related to some sort of unused content that would have been in the game originally. Um, because again, this is when you have to sneak into the castle. Um, there's no way to get into the castle the way I did. Um, and you can't leave the castle through normal means either. Um, so I use the moving fast option here to get out anyway, because normally you can't do this. Um, and it wouldn't let me back in the castle by normal means either. Um, so I just decided to go back to the boat. Uh, because I wasn't sure what the game would do, if it would even let me do it. Um, but Ryudo says unique dialogue here. He does not ever say this. Um, he says, let's go, we'll be more careful this time. I don't know if that hints that maybe there was a way to get caught um, and get kicked out of the castle and have to redo it. Or if I'm just overthinking what that dialogue can mean. But under normal means, you would never ever see Ryudo say that. And now we see Tio save the day, just standing over there ready, off, well, normally off camera anyway. Um, you can see that her weapon is stuck in her head too. <laughs> um, but she quote unquote throws it here in a moment to save everyone from Melfis. Yep, there she goes. Go Tio. 
And what I love on this part um, is they're all around the campfire over here, but you can already see Elena standing over there for the cutscene that's about to happen when uh, she and Ryudo talks. I guess she's sitting over there, but it's just funny. Elena's in two places at once. You know what? The world is so and here we'll do some immersion breaking um, to show another example of how the game uh, looks good under normal means, but then you move the camera just a little bit and you see that that guy backdrop is just literally <laughs> a square that they placed over the water um, with the textures on it. Um, again, it's, it's really cool to see how uh, game developers do things. Very creative, I suppose. And this one here, I actually almost completely missed. Like, I had looked over this room before, I was about to stop, and then I just noticed behind this mirror, it looked weird. So I wanted to get me a closer look at it. Eventually I realized that there's weird stuff there, I swear. Alright, I realized it. Um, it's just a lot of kind of random textures and images. Um, so it looks like, you know, there's a flower reflection there. There's a picture of Millennia that's used in a mirror reflection later on. Just some other little, like, odds and ends um, from different textures. All right, we're getting to another thing that was super neat to me because I just love off-camera secrets and going out of bounds and finding cut content. I couldn't find a whole lot in this game. Um, but in this particular part, during the flashback sequence where Sky is telling Elena all about Ryudo's past, um, there was some interesting stuff, which you're going to see here in just a moment. Then, one day, a terrible storm beset the village. All right, so um, I just moved the camera a bit, and I can see that the rain was a little funny, but also the cut 21 and cut 15. This was really cool to me because I did not see any, like, just leftover developer stuff like that anywhere else in the whole game. Um, so not sure if that literally maybe is referring to cutscene numbers or something, or if this was something that was supposed to be removed cut, because you'll see... Later on, there's another version of this exact map without those words on it. And moving the camera just a little bit over um, shows two character models that I, again, had a hard time getting a super good look at. Um, but I was able to find out it's the younger uh, Ryudo and Melfus models. Um, they do later on show up in a scene here which, again, would be in the uh, map that doesn't have the words uh, cut in 21 and 15 on them. Um, so I'm not quite sure why they're there, especially looking all weird and blue like that. <laughs> it could be related to the words there being uh, cut. I mean, maybe this is just a slight error that was left in the game, or... I don't know, I could just be thinking uh, into it too much. But it is uh, still pretty fascinating to me to see something like this in one of my favorite games. Swordsman in the world. The sword was believed to protect the... There's a few things that will happen here. Um... Most of the time, this is an example of it. If a character walks off screen, they just disappear. So I didn't, of course, record every instance of that. There's some moments where the character does just kind of linger there for a bit. Um, but this is the next time it shows this area. And again, you'll see those words aren't there. It doesn't uh, have the cut uh, 15, cut 21. And Ryudo and Melfis look normal. They're not um, blue and weird anymore. So... I don't. I really don't know at all why there's two different, very, very similar maps. There's some differences you can see for yourself just by looking that there's definitely things that are different about it, not a whole lot. But it's just 
pretty cool. Maybe that was a little bit of content left in accidentally. And this here is just a uh, quick little clip uh, showing a better angle of those two weird versions of the characters over here. And I'll say here, um, I expected Ryudo to be similar to the other person that was in a bed earlier in the game, where he would only maybe be a torso and arms, um, but I was wrong, and you'll see what they did with Ryudo under the blankets here in a moment. Um, hopefully this doesn't get me demonetized, I don't even earn money from YouTube, but there we go. Um, again, there's, there's no bits and bobs or anything, but they gave him a whole body, um, and... It's even like skin colored and everything. It's it's pretty interesting that they went through all the efforts to do that, um, especially because that other character in the bed earlier on didn't have a whole body. Um, but Ryudo has his entire body uh, flesh colored. Um, yeah, he just doesn't have a, his bits there, of course, which is good. <laughs> Alright, here we are at the Granis Saber, and you can see before the cutscene even starts that Silas Leonin and the soldiers are already just chilling over there. Um, right before the scene starts though, she does move. She sinks into the ground a bit, and that's just for the cutscene because uh, whenever she approaches you um, from the angle the game has the camera at, they just have her ascend from the earth so it looks like she's approaching you and really she's just being raised out of the graphics. And now we just have a quick little clip where Millennia teleports everyone to safety. It's just a way to show how they did the, the screen transition. It was just an overlay. Yep, that's it. Move the camera a bit and just see it was just a overlay placed over the screen. Now, in most scenes uh, that do not include Ryudo, um, he's not anywhere on screen. Like in the Gaia 2, if you watch that one, um, I found out that Lang is always on the map somewhere. It's not the case in this one, but in this particular instance, Ryudo was chilling way out of view down there, as you can see. Now at this point in the game, uh, as you can see all the characters up there in the Granite Saber, um, just realizing the day of darkness has come. Um, and then it transitions over to show what's going on in uh, this town uh, and how the NPCs and everything are reacting to what's going on. So your party members shouldn't be here, but as you'll see in a moment, they're all here. <laughs> they're all just clumped together, basically right in the middle of the screen. There they are. And there's still be a soldier down there ready for his battle later on. And now we are right after you battle the heart of Valmar and Selene's of the honor. Um, I just wanted to show that her character model remains over there, just chilling. Um, even when I left the map and came back, she's still there. So technically, uh, even though it's off camera, after you beat Selene. Still remains in the game forever, just standing there. Um, I don't believe I recorded it, but I did manage to uh, get Ryudo over there and tried to see if anything would happen when I pressed X at her, but there wasn't anything that happened. And as you can see here, uh, Ryudo, Merig, and Tio are all up on this level looking down where Pope Zara and Elena are supposed to be. Um, but once the scene transitions down there, 
Um, it also puts those three characters down there. <laughs> um, and they look a little funny with how the game did it. They're just kind of standing on each other. See, you can see it over there with uh, Merrig on Ryudo's head. Merrig's a big dude. I'm sure uh, that hurts old Ryudo. And as I've said, there's not a whole lot of uh, leftover odds and ends. Um, but I did find this. It's not there all the time. But um, once this particular cutscene started, there was just that uh, blue square. It was only visible from the one side and it was flat. It wasn't like a cube or anything. And I have no idea what it's there for. Um, don't know what purpose it could serve at all. Um, but it was something I found, I just thought I'd share it with you all. This particular scene was interesting to me, um, because as you can see, Ryudo um, has his hands up against that barrier. Um, so he's in a very particular angle and position. Um, but here in a moment, whenever the scene transitions and Ryudo is off camera, he faces a different way, but he keeps that same position. Um, as you can see right here, um, let's see, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so he still is in that pose, but he's not on the same side anymore. He's like basically just looking at the wall and Mary was there for a moment and then just decided to disappear. Now this scene uh, does not have Ryudo in it, but you see Sky over there and you can see him moving. I was pressing the buttons that do lift Ryudo up and down, so basically um, Ryudo was there, just invisible for some reason, um, but Sky was not invisible. And here we find Ryudo um, fighting off the darkness of Valmar, and Moving the camera out a little bit shows the incompleteness of the map he's in. But also, there's something floating up there. You get a little bit closer and see that that's all the other party members. I just kind of smooshed together so you can see Elena and Rowan and Tio. Just a bit of a warning, uh, this next scene is pretty bright. It's a little flashing as well, so you may want to skip on ahead if uh, you're photosensitive to that sort of thing. Um, but this is another example of an overlay used uh, for transitions and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, you'll see it in a moment. It's lightning flashing and all that stuff, but it's just, you know, a little overlay again, just a little square <laughs> that uh, is used to represent. This part may be something um, that's not even anything worth mentioning. Well, as you can see, just another example of how they always store the scripted battles under the stage. But underneath these faces, um, there's those eyes and a mouth. Um, I do believe when you fight this boss that its um, mouth can open and its eyes potentially. Um, but I wasn't able to. 100% confirm that. So I just thought I'd show it in case this is something that's not typically used. Um, it probably is, though. But it was still interesting to get a closer look at it. Getting closer to the end now. So here is Elena and Millennia and Ryudo as they fly away after saving the day.
And now it's one year later, but moving the camera shows those words are just right above the town, just floating up in the sky. I, I found that pretty interesting myself. I wanted so badly here at the end of the game to have Rowan go places he wasn't supposed to go, but it was very hard to do, um, with one exception, which happens here. Um, I normally can't get through that barrier, but using the fast motion, I was able to do so. And normally you won't be able to go to either one of these buildings um, at the end of the game. But as you'll see here, this is unique dialogue. Um, I don't know why it's there because you never get to see this. You can never visit these uh, buildings as Rowan at this part of the game, but the things they're saying are specific to Rowan and fitting with this um, part of the game. And in this building, you can see the tutorial guy is missing, just completely invisible. And the shopkeeper also has unique dialogue, so... This is 100% unused content here. Uh, again, don't know why it's even in the game. This, this is impossible uh, to see under normal circumstances. But I, I just live for this sort of stuff. I honestly do. And here I uh, just decided to leave uh, the town. I was afraid it was going to really mess up stuff, but unfortunately it did nothing. I was just able to leave. There was no other options or places to go. So I just went right on back into the town. Now before uh, moving on, I did want to go back to these buildings just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, because I was really excited that I was able to finally get somewhere I wasn't supposed to go. Um, because again, the game really normally prevents this. Um, but something unique happens here. Um, as you can see, Rowan's portrait is Millennia. And next it is Ryudo. <laughs> So I'm not sure if me going out to the world map triggered uh, the randomness of the portraits uh, changing, or if me going to this side of the town somehow did it. But that continues throughout the whole ending, um, until it's over. Um, every single character that has a portrait, it just randomizes. Um, sometimes it's their face, sometimes it's a different character's face, and sometimes it's the same character but with a different expression that they're not supposed to have, or something like that. Um, so there's a few examples I recorded just to show that happening. And if you're interested, there's a closer look at uh, Millennia's school teacher outfit. <laughs> there you see, um, Merwin had Millennia's portrait still. And now Millennia is Ryudo. So yeah, you'll just see that pop up. I don't have to point out every time it happens. But in a few of these clips, just look at the character talking and then the picture that's there. And they're not going to match up most of the time. Now, I'm sure this has always been the case. It was just something that I would never have been able to notice back in the uh, standard definition PlayStation 2 version uh, that I played. And maybe not even in this HD version um, without being able to zoom in. Um, but here's Merrick's grave. Um, and his name's actually on it. Um, they have an L there for the R. Um, so I guess when it was localized, uh, the name was changed a bit to accommodate for the pronunciation differences. Um, but it was very cool to see that they have his name on his tombstone. That's really not something that's normally all that visible. Now we're just going to do another example of the uh, random portraits. Only because one of them happens to be Merrick this time. So it was just 
a little funny that you know he's here at Mary's grave and you know, there's Mary uh, himself, his picture showing. Now, this example of the wrong portrait was interesting because it was the only time during all of this that it was not a party member's picture. Um, but maybe that's because this was an NPC talking, I'm not sure, but as you can see, it's definitely not got his picture there. All right, and as we wrap up here, just wanted to thank anyone that watched this. I'm definitely not an expert at making this sort of stuff, but I like sharing my finds because I love my JRPGs and I really love finding unused or out of bounds content in video games. So I hope you found some enjoyment out of this and I appreciate you watching. Uh, this last part is just at the very, very end uh, with Ryudo just to show a little bit of the surroundings where the ending takes place at. Again, I appreciate you all for watching and I hope you have a good one.